that he's yeah, on I drugs? Think, yeah, his, yeah, I think he really needs to check himself for that. Yeah, it's a bad thing. It's probably out of his control, but hey. Oh, me on crack. Gotcha. He ain't on crack, but he probably <laughs> like off ketamine, crystal meth or something. I don't know. He set up a whole birthday party and you go beat the man up. That's how you say thank you. That's cocaine, y'all. This nigga on drugs, y'all. For over a decade, Chris Brown has been the center of attention in all the wrong ways in Hollywood. From assaulting Rihanna to drug addictions, the singer has been involved in all the wrong things constantly, but now he could finally be trying to look for help. In 2017, huge news hit the mainstream when those closest to the superstar, his loyal current and former employees, cherished friends, and trusted associates made a daring decision to open up to the esteemed pages of Billboard. It was a last-ditch effort aimed at exposing something truly shocking. Chris Brown was battling a very serious and potentially fatal drug addiction. He's dancing with death, revealed one courageous member of Brown's team to the magazine, putting into perspective the dire nature of the situation. This extensive expose, relying on the accounts of unnamed sources, peeled back the layers to unveil a distressing truth. Brown had forsaken the necessary treatment for his bipolar disorder for at least a year, while simultaneously succumbing to the horrible allure of hard drugs for a harrowing span of two years. Recalling the unsettling events of the past, former bodyguards, many of whom have since departed, recounted the nights they were forced to remain vigilant, anxiously monitoring Brown's pulse as he teetered on the edge of danger. Operating without a manager or publicist for almost a year, Brown's behavior took a concerning turn when he allegedly threatened a female tour manager, who promptly resigned, citing his destructive drug use. It's been claimed that the chain of events leading to this downward spiral began after Chris Brown's highly publicized assault on Rihanna in 2009. Despite subsequent efforts at rehabilitation, including a stay in rehab, Brown reportedly managed to maintain sobriety for an impressive 15 months, until April 2015, when his heartbreak over his breakup with Carriage Tran caused him to veer off track once again. It doesn't matter. It's it doesn't matter. Matter. I got you. Fast forwarding to the present day, only a small group remains in Brown's circle. Some are bound by non-disclosure agreements, while others are gripped by fear of potential retaliation. This reveals a pretty shocking truth. The once close bond between Brown and his mother has deteriorated significantly, leaving them largely estranged. Reports suggest that his mother now takes care of his daughter during his designated custody periods. Adding to the changing dynamics, Brown's inner circle has undergone a transformation, with a significant presence of members associated with the Bloods, a notorious street gang. A former friend, acknowledging the arduous journey of addiction, solemnly stated, you can talk to any drug addict or chemically imbalanced person. It doesn't just go away. It's something you have to work on. You have to change your lifestyle, and he's not doing the things he needs to do to get well, so he's never going to be well. The kid is going to hit rock bottom, but that was years ago. Surely Chris has gotten better since then, right? Wrong. Everything has gotten worse for him. Just recently, hours before Usher and Chris Brown were scheduled to grace the stage with their electrifying performances, a heated altercation erupted between the two stars at a Las Vegas roller rink nearby. Hollywood Unlocked, known for their exclusive reports, first broke the story, alleging that Brown had jumped Usher. The incident took place during the early hours of May 6 as Brown celebrated his 34th birthday at the rink. Reports suggest that Brown reportedly tried at one point to talk to singer-turned-actor Tiana Taylor, who was ignoring him. Shockingly, both Usher and Taylor were present at the roller rink to commemorate the birthday of the controversial figure himself, Chris Brown, even serenading him with a celebratory song. TMZ managed to get their hands on a snippet of video capturing the escalating tension. Brown can be seen unleashing a fiery shout at Taylor, prompting Usher to step in as the peacemaker. Little did they know that it would further fuel Brown's fire, causing him to storm off with his entourage. Usher, never one to back down, reportedly took the time to remove his skates before following Brown, ready to confront him and his crew behind a row of parked buses. It's reported that Usher emerged from the clash with a bloody nose, a clear sign of the epic brawl that ensued. Now, let's dive into the catalyst behind this epic showdown. According to the ever-reliable TMZ, it all comes down to a scrap Michael Jackson tribute that Brown had planned for the American Music Awards. Apparently, Brown, for reasons that remain shrouded in mystery, decided to lay the blame on none other than Tiana Taylor herself. Can you believe it? A dispute over an award show that happened six months ago, when they could have chosen a more high-profile event like the Grammys to throw down. 
Despite their newfound animosity, both Brown and Usher still managed to put on a show-stopping performance that same night at Lovers and Friends Festival. TMZ assured fans that neither artist showed any signs of injury during their back-to-back -back sets. But hold your breath, because Brown wasn't done with his fiery antics just yet. The next night, TMZ caught him right in the middle of another altercation of the festival, with security stepping in to break it up. While Brown hasn't directly addressed the brawl with Usher, he did have a few choice words about the subsequent incident. In a bold Instagram comment, he claimed to have simply intervened and dismissed the swirling rumors. According to Brown, he was just trying to reach his child while security was clearing the stage. Chris also reportedly made things a little messy at Missy Elliott's set. New footage circulating online appears to show Chris aggressively trying to reach somebody across from him in what looks to be the backstage area of a venue. For several blog accounts, this was purportedly taken during Missy Elliott's set Saturday night in Vegas. No details are out yet about this, including what led up to it or who Chris may have been beefing with. Recently, Chris Brown was expelled from a court-ordered rehab program after allegedly engaging in inappropriate behavior with a female patient and refusing a drug test. The Malibu facility was shaken when Brown reportedly made unsettling remarks, boasting about his prowess with guns and knives. This alarming incident resulted in his immediate arrest as a probation violation warrant stemming from his infamous 2009 assault of then-girlfriend Rihanna also surfaced. Facing the consequences of his actions, Brown appeared before Ella County Superior Court Judge James Branlin, who deemed him incapable of staying out of trouble. The judge denied Brown's request to enter another rehab facility and ordered him to remain in custody until his trial for the misdemeanor assault charge. This charge originated from an altercation in Washington, D.C., where Brown allegedly assaulted a man on the sidewalk last October. Following the incident, Brown willingly checked himself into rehab, but his stay was short-lived as he was expelled shortly after vandalizing his mother's car during a heated family session. The judge revoked his probation last November, offering him an opportunity to avoid jail time by completing a 90-day anger management and drug rehab program. While Brown successfully completed the program, he was required to remain at the facility until his trial the following month. Court reports shed light on the underlying factors contributing to Brown's erratic behavior and substance abuse, attributing them to a combination of bipolar disorder and post-traumatic stress disorder. A letter from his residential treatment facility pointed to his untreated mental health disorder, severe sleep deprivation, self-medication, and untreated PTSD as key factors driving his aggression and physical outbursts. The letter emphasized that individuals grappling with these conditions often resort to substance use as a means to self-medicate their biochemical mood swings and trauma triggers. Prior to his legal entanglements, Brown's social media activity raised eyebrows as he frequently shared photos of himself smoking joints on Twitter. Holding a medical marijuana card in California, he argued before a judge that cannabis helped him manage his anger issues. According to an insider, Brown preferred using medical marijuana over prescribed antidepressants as he found the prescribed drugs made Chris feel very numb and he felt that everything around him was fuzzy. Twitter seemed to have a very different opinion on Chris, and it's hard not to see why. One Twitter user said, Y'all be giving Chris Brown grace since I was in high school. I turn 30 next month, maybe he just is a bad person bro. Another user pointed out that Chris Brown will never change because he'll never be forced into any real contrition. His sellout friends and fans will always find an excuse and plead for grace. One user had a hilarious take on this situation saying, Calling Chris Brown cocaine bear is one of the most on-point insults I've ever seen. So while some think Chris Brown's behavior can be explained by his drug addictions, many believe it is time people started holding him accountable for all of the abuse allegations and other charges leveled against him. It would certainly not make sense to attribute all of his antics to him being a drug addict and mentally unstable, but there is always the fact that it certainly has affected him to some degree. What do you think? That's all for the video, folks. Thanks for watching.